नमस्ते प्रणाम गीता ध्यान ओ पार्थय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणन स्वयं व्यासन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्य महाभारत अद्वैता मृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायि अंबत्वा भगवद्गीते भगवदीतेषिणी ओ भगवदगीता विथ विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव एनलाइटनमेंट टू अर्जुन द एंशंट सेज व्यास इंक्लूडेड इट इन द महाभारत ओ गॉड इज शॉवर ऑफ द नेक्टर लाइक नॉलेज ऑफ नॉन डिजम कंटेंट इन योर एटीन चैप्टर्स ओ माई अफेक्शनेट मदर द डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ री बर्थ आई मेडिटेट अपॉन दी कृष्ण वंदना वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु सन् ऑफ वसुदेव द स्लेयर ऑफ कंस एंड चाणूर एक्स्ट्रीम डिलाइट फॉर मदर देवकी ओ लॉर्ड कृष्ण द सुप्रीम टीचर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स माय सैल्यूटेशन टू यू The Gunatre Vibhaga Yoga, fourteenth adhyay of Shri Mad Bhagavad Gita, and Shri Krishna has just introduced us to the mighty power of these three gunas. Till now, Shri Krishna has given us a kind of a, a, a brief a preamble before entering into the exact subject matter of this adhyay. Now, in the fifth shlok that we read last, Shri Krishna. is now uh, straight way coming to the real topic telling us that it is these three gunas of the prakriti the sattva rajas tamas they bind this avyaya dehin to the deha they uh, they they bind not just loosely it is a fast binding you know like a fevicol ad that this it it binds with such a great force that the avyaya dehin the embodied jivatman it starts forgetting its real nature as it is and as if the jivatman starts enjoying experiencing this life with the body the entire effort is to have pleasure but along with pleasure also comes pain along with joy also comes sorrow along with happiness also comes happiness they are always together these pairs of opposites and these are the experiences that this jivatman has to undergo with its fast association with its fast binding with its so called unbreakable bonding with the deha with the uh, physical body सत्वं इति गुणाहा प्रकृति सत्वजतमा निबद्धनती महाबाहो देहे देहिन अव्यय ओ महाबाहो ओ माइटी आर्म यू माइट हैव डन मेनी थिंग्स मेनी डीड्स ऑफ ग्रेट वेलर ऑफ ग्रेट यू नो माइट बट इन रियलिटी व्हाट इज हैपनिंग यू फॉरगेट हु यू आर इवन ए महाबाहो लाइक यू यू विल फॉरगेट वॉट हु यू आर and you will feel i have done these great deeds you will forget who is you know dwelling inside who is ultimately making it happen you do those great deeds mahabaho because the three gunas of the prakriti they have such a strong influence that they bind this dweller inside with the body to such an extent that it forgets its own nature sattva rajas tamas these gunas o oh mighty armed born of prakriti they bind the indestructible embodied one indestructible embodied one they bind it fast in the body and the whole play starts the whole game starts now shri krishna is going to explain to us in details about each of these three gunas the sattva rajas and tamas the sixth shloka shri krishna tells about the sattva guna what are its properties and how 
it affects how it influences the one who is dwelling inside the body how it influences the body for that matter the jnanendriyas karmendriyas and the internal uh, faculties that uh, the, the prakriti has provided with each uh, being so about the sattva guna tatra sattvam nirmalatvat prakashakamanamayam sukha sangena badnati jnana sanghena chanagh now here shri krishna has used another term uh, to address arjuna as anagh anagh is one who is sinless who has not committed anything contrary to the morality contrary to ethics no unethical things no immoral things no evil things no wretched things he is anagh arjuna is supposed to i mean he he has done uh, although he has uh, fought uh, uh, so many battles although he had fought uh, one over so many enemies but it was all for swadharma it was all for the sake of his duty by which he was bound to do it so there is no sin there is no sin if a soldier kills a, a you know enemy soldier that is his duty otherwise killing is immoral it is unethical it is a sin but when a soldier in the battlefield kills another that is very much a part of his own dharma so that is how uh, shri krishna is now addressing arjuna as anagh says tatra satvam nirvala nirmalatvat of these tatra is of these of these three gunas satva the satva guna is nirmalatvat it is from its stainlessness it is purity in in in, in itself the sattva basically is it, it 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 is it signifies purity it signifies it signifies stainlessness it signifies a, a clean heart kind of hmm? uh, we, we, without any uh, you know black marks nirmalatvat hmm? prakashanam uh, anamayam and, and it all it is also luminous among the three gunas sattva gun sattva gun has got that enlightening power attached to it sattva gun has got all the positive uh, uh, you know uh, qualities for that matter for the all positive attributes attached to it sattva gun is nirmal it is stainless sattva gun is prakashakam it enlightens oneself sattva guna is anamayam it is in fact it is a healthy it is healthy of all the three gunas hmm? and it is basically healthy in a sense it is it it is unobstructive sukha sangena badnati it binds one badnati is binds like uh, we have seen nibadnanti mahabaho the all the, uh, the the atman gets bound with the deha because of the three gunas now this among the three gunas sattva guna it binds sukha sangena it binds one with the attachment of seeking pleasure it always wants pleasure it always wants happiness it always wants joy because bliss is the characteristic bliss is the absolute attribute of sattva guna sattva guna wants to enjoy sattva guna wants to experience all the positive uh, experiences joy happiness pleasure bliss this is what sattva wants this body to do and sattva binds the body with all these experiences sukha sangena padnati jnana sangena cha and also with the knowledge with that enlightenment with that understanding so sattva has got all the positive traits attached to it there is nothing wrong with the sattva isn't it if we look at this if we look at the meaning of this shloka what shri krishna has told us about sattva we we will say we all want to be sattvic but does it really happen so hmm? just by having the name sattvic a person doesn't become sattvic so shri krishna is telling of these 
Sattva being stainless, Sattva being free from any black mark, any black spots, any dirt. Hmm? It is luminous and unobstructive. It is luminous and healthiest of the three gunas. It binds, O oh sinless one, O oh Arjuna, although you have not committed any sins, but the Sattva guna, it binds by creating attachment to happiness and attachment to knowledge. These are the traits of Sattva. It, 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 it always wants to uh, uh, seek happiness. It always wants to seek joy. When we say that, uh, I, uh, you, um, when we have that feeling of, you know, happiness and joy in us, what, what, what makes these feelings possible? It is the Sattva Guna which is in us, which is influencing us. When we smile, when we laugh, when at times we are so happy internally, in spite of all dire circumstances, there are moments whether when we are so much at ease, we are so much in peace, which are so much in a uh, happy mode for that matter. That is because of the Sattva Gun. Sattva Gun, it attaches oneself with the pleasure, with the happiness, with joy. And also, Sattva attaches this body with knowledge, with enlightenment. Now, this is what Sattva does. Hmm? The Sattva Guna may be compared to an evenly made clear glass. Supposing we have a piece of glass, like, like uh, when we go to museum, all those priceless things, hmm, they are kept in the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, glass cabinets. We see from outside, we see everything. Everything is crystal clear of the things kept inside that glass box or glass jar. But we can't touch them. We can only see. We can only have the pleasure of seeing those things, but we cannot touch them. Sattva Guna is like that. We can see everything with it in, in its total clarity with the Sattva Guna. We can see everything in its true shape, true uh, color, but we cannot touch it. Things seen through that glass are as vividly visible to as to a normal naked eye. So if that, uh, the, that uh, object is not kept in that glass cabinet, even then we will see it in the same manner, only difference is if we want to touch that, we can touch it. But with the glass cabinet, we can only see it, we can only perceive it. Sattva is similarly transparent to the brilliance of Atman. And this is what the property of Atman actually is. Absolute clarity. Nothing is hidden, no ambiguity, nothing under my sleeves. Transparent. That is the Sattva Guna. And seeing things objectively in their true perspective is the secular knowledge and seeing the Atman as he is, is the sacred knowledge. So anyway, this no, uh, Sattva makes us see the things, makes us gain the knowledge, gives us some enlightenment from the right perspective. It makes us look at the things as they are, not presume or not assume what they could be or what they should be. Although they are kept in the glass container, in the glass cabinet, we can see them as they are. We don't assume if there is a uh, uh, some wonderful painting which is, you know, put in a glass uh, uh, cabinet. We can see all the details in that painting. We cannot assume, oh, this painting could be like this, this painting could be like this, uh, may, maybe uh, uh, the, the painter... Uh, had depicted this, but we are not able to see it. Not, no, no, nothing hidden. Everything is transparent. Everything is crystal clear. That is the nature of the Sattva. The enjoyment of pleasure is with a greater gusto in the highly developed ones than in ordinary beings. The highly developed souls. They, they, they really experience pleasure in everything. Even if somebody is in dire circumstances, as I said earlier, in the worst of his times, thinking it to be the boon of the Lord, 
thinking it to be the gift of the mother. These people, they are always in that blissful mood of their own. As we evolve higher and higher in our spiritual journey, we acquire this attachment to pleasure, we, 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 this attachment to bliss because of the Sattva Gun. Even if we are in the, in the worst of our circumstances, something terrible happens. If a person is uh, spiritually evolved to a certain extent, nobody can snatch away that peace, that bliss, that pleasure, that joy, that, that the saintly man is uh, experiencing in his heart with the communion with the divine, with feeling that oneness with the divine. Physically, uh, uh, around him, so many uh, worse things might be happening. But that person is not disturbed at all. And that quality, that quality of experiencing pleasure in whatever comes to me, experiencing, experiencing bliss in whatever happens to me, that quality is because of Sattva Guna. This is due to the predominance of Sattva in the spiritually advanced beings. A hearty enjoyment of a pleasure in its turn breeds an inordinate attachment to it. And as, as one starts getting that pleasure, as one starts realizing that pleasure of being one with the Lord, then further and further, further and further, that soul, that person gets attached to that attachment of pleasure. That attachment to get the divine pleasure, it, it increases manifold, multiple uh, uh, times, maybe in geometric progression for that matter. The one who knows pleasure greatly next tries to increase his knowledge of the object of enjoyment. If I am finding great pleasure in chanting the name of the Lord, if I am finding great pleasure, great joy in worshipping my chosen ideal, then what is the next step? Next step is, I want to know more about my chosen ideal. I want to be more close. How can I become one with my chosen ideal? How can I know him or her in their total clarity? That attachment towards knowledge of the ultimate, that increases. And that increase in the attachment towards the knowledge of the ultimate is because of Sattva Guna. Therefore, there grows as much attachment to the knowledge as there is attachment to the pleasure. I want to know, I want to see, I want to see the mother like, like Sri Ramakrishna, he had become mad for that vision of the Divine Mother. He had had the experience, he had had the one first-hand knowledge, I mean, uh, the, the, the uh, joy of becoming one with the Mother and then he became restless. He was yearning for the vision of his Mother. He was not getting that vision, he became so restless. And finally, when he was about to put his neck on that sword in the Kali temple, Suddenly he had the vision of that luminous form and that's it. That was the complete knowledge. So after gaining pleasure, after gaining the joy of getting to know the ultimate, then one feels I must have the ultimate knowledge now. Enough of it, enough of the theory. Now I want practical. I want to see my mother. I want to touch my mother. I want my mother to touch my cheek. I want my mother to kiss me. I want my mother to take me on her lap. That stage comes and that stage of gaining more and more knowledge about the ultimate. That is because of the Sattva Guna. The scope for cultivation of pleasure and the knowledge pertaining to it is ever on the increase in Sattva. The more and more predominant the Sattva Guna becomes, that's it. Know it for sure that you are 
at the pinnacle of your spiritual journey. You are at, at the end point of your spiritual journey. So that is what Sattva does. Now Sri Krishna has explained Sattva in such a beautiful manner that we start wondering that if that is the thing, then why is it that we are still under that veil of ignorance? Why we are not that transparent glass through which people can see through and through what is there lying within us. But there is hidden agenda with our mother Prakriti. Sattva is only one aspect of the three gunas. And it has, Sattva has all the positivity attached to it, no doubt about it. Attachment to pleasure, the attachment to knowledge, attachment to bliss, that purity, hmm, that nirmalatva, that prakashatva, huh? that, that, that uh, purity, that stainlessness, that power of enlightenment and anamayam, that, that healthy uh, attribute, that, uh, the, the, you know, unobstructive attribute, that all these positive traits are attached to the sattva guna. But then why the sattva guna does not take us forward on its own? It cannot because there are other two siblings of the Gunas, other two siblings, the Rajas and Tamas, they are also in, I mean, conjoined with Sattva. They are present in us. So what happens, what, how, how, which way these Rajas and Tamas, they influence us. That Shri Krishna will tell us in the next few verses. Till then, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Sri Krishna Arpanamastu, Jai Sri Ramakrishna, Jai Thakur Jai Ma, Jai Swamiji.